We're going to look at designing some buildings here in Forma. We have two options here, a line building and a basic building. If we start from the top down, line building, we can click on our site. You'll see when I draw from point A to point B here and hit return to finish the command, it's snapping to the middle of the building, to the edge of the site. I can make adjustments here to how I want it to align. So if I redo this again and go to align to the right of the site, you'll see when I draw, it's now drawing to the right edge of the site. Here we can update the width of the building. So maybe if we want a deeper floor plate, we could go for 18. We can adjust the number of floors here. So this might be 10 and the floor to floor height might be something like uh, four meters. It also has uh, sections in here. So these sections could be larger or smaller, depending on uh, how you want to divide this building up. And uh, you can make adjustments to how you want the circulation to run. So at the moment, it is uh, double loaded. And we can go to align that corridor because we want to make sure that we have views of the park and views of the water. We'll have it centered and we'll leave it on uh, two meters. The function, we can set it to residential. You can add more functions here should you want. So one example might be retail and you can change the colors if you want to do that as well. And it has the, uh, the GFA, GIA, NIA, and there are some settings here you can adjust here. With the line building, you can start to use this to automate some of the workflows. So you've got the line tool and trace existing shape. So I have here, if I want to choose my site, it will automatically go and do a line around the edge of the site. It's aligning to the right. I could drop this down to be 12 meters. I could change the height. And as I make these adjustments, it will fix for me. I can choose the function here and I can adjust my circulation. Now, this probably isn't the right type of design that we want down on the Sydney Harbour front. So I'll look at using the line building tool here. And I want to align to the right. And when we go and draw here, you can see it's uh, snapping. We can move around. So 130 meters. And maybe I want to do something sort of interesting here. I can also drag this to a certain point and type in the number that I want, and then look at the degrees that I want. So one, four, five, a bit too sharp, sorry. One, one, five might be interesting, or 10 degrees. And then hit that to complete the command. So this is my linear building, which is still in line mode, and I can make adjustments to it as needed. and I could divide up the sections if needed. So I'll make this residential circulation. I'll keep that as uh, two meters. And now we have something that's going to start off um, our building design, which we can convert and then export out of former into Revit. So to um, take this to being a basic building, you can start in the basic building sketch design mode, or here to the right, you can release to the basic building. And this is where you would do it for the Revit workflow. So if I hit that, I now have um, the ability to drive the floor to floor height and the height of the building still, but there's more I can do with the building components here. So if I select uh, one of them, it's going to bring up 3D model down the bottom here, but it's going to break down each individual 
unit. And you've got a few tools up here on the right. So we have draw line, draw a rectangle, and we have tools to control rulers. We can show areas, which might be of more interest at the schematic stage. So if we're doing residential apartments, we could you know, be trying to target the square meterage for 112 square meters for a three bed, for example, or we could work with the lengths. We can adjust the grid size, so we'll keep it on uh, one meter at the moment. You can also set the grid orientation. Here, I've also been able to adjust the grid orientation. So you can set that by clicking on certain points in the model. So if I go back to this part of the building, and you can see the grid orientation is not set. I can go here, hit the G button, and then do that. And now that will align back with the unit. So this can help when you're wanting to use these draw line tools. There are a few tools here we can use to create rises and cores. So for this wedge part of the building, I can select in the 3D view and I can go and grab those odd shapes, select it, and then make it core. You can see it's only done the first floor, the top floor here. So if I go to hit shift to grab all those floors, it is now filling down to add them all. So likewise on the other side, I can grab that wedge shape and because those are selected now and I change it to core, it does it all the way down. Other things we can do is if we want to make a core on this side, we could go and use the rectangle tool. So you can do it inside the space if you want or use the line tool to do that. Close it off and you can see here it's showing the dimension of this core. We could grab that line and then just snap it up. And with the tools here, we could look at the area of that core. So 25 meters, and I can go and select that one item, and then hit core, and that's the core. And again, all I'm doing to fill that down is holding down the shift and selecting those floors. So that's how we can start to fine tune our layout. We can also divide up uh, units here. And now we have say studio units, should we wanna do that. So once you've gone through and done all this, you'll have um, your units and your areas for your cores and your corridors. We can manipulate it in 3D though, here in the model environment. So. I want to create uh, some balconies. And the simple way to do this is to go to the uh, unit here and I can double click on that unit. So I want to do it on the angle here so these jut out, so there's a bit more of a view for these particular units. So I'll double click on that and I'll just drag that out a little bit. Now again, a little bit closer, I can look at the areas, but I can also go back to the lengths and look at how far that that's coming out. So as I go to adjust that, I can get an idea of how deep that balcony is going to be. So maybe it's going to come out four meters. Um, I want to stagger these. So this one is doing it on the 10th floor. Hold down shift. And that is now filling down those balconies. So with that, you can lay out your apartments, lay out your cores, and lay out your balcony design. Some other things you might want to do to soften this building a little bit is to step it down a little, a little bit at the front here. So maybe those first few floors can be three, and we can gradually step these up. So we create something a bit more forgiving, getting closer to the opera house, and we have potential roof gardens here. So I now have 
uh, a design where I've got some options for some balconies, some stepping terraces. I can also grab either individual units or the entire stack and move it up. So move tool and it's snapping. I want to move this um, up so I can hit tab and move it up, say four meters. So it's actually lifted off the ground so people can pass underneath. And I can grab a number of the units here that I might want to lift off the ground by holding down the shift key and then move them up as well. Now there are some options here to create more interesting shapes. You could take one of these items and then convert it here into a 3D sketch. Now this is beta, but um, if you do this, it won't necessarily convert the data into a Revit system family when you take it through. So there's the option to, to do that. Um, simply if you want to do do this uh, as a tester, I can show this in the demo where we would create a basic building. If I just do this one, say 30 meters by 15, just close that out and hit enter to return and we'll do that 40 meters high. So with that basic building here, we can then go to convert to a 3D sketch and this will bring up a new dialog. And now in the 3D sketch mode, mode you'll have tools for sketching lines and circles and splines. You'll have primitives and a number of advanced modeling tools. You'll also be able to click on items and right click and see a number of tools for array arraying, uh, rotating, reversing faces, tilt faces. So simple example here, um, if I've got that face selected, I could draw a line on that face. And with that, I can now split that face and I could use one of these tools to extrude it. So that will give me my, my pitch roof. I could also look at tools to uh, chamfer the edges. Um, you'll see here, because some of the data has come through from the basic building model, it's, it's available for me to make adjustments here. So maybe floor 12 might be different. So we can make that six meters, for example. Um, with this, you could use some of the tools to fill it, to create that, that chamfer effect. So it does group automatically. Um, you can hit G to hit group. That's just a better way to um, manage the file. So here, if I want to look at that edge, I can now go to the advanced modeling tools and hit fill it. It defaults to um, one foot, just type in three, and then fill it, finish that command. And now we have uh, a fillet. Likewise, we could do something on the inside face of the building. So again, just clicking here on that face, we can either go to some of the tools here or I can right click and go to offset face and then bring that in. So if I just tab to be a bit more accurate and go one, go okay. We now have a offset face. And with that offset face, we could use some of these tools to extrude or tilt face, or even rotate it. So a simple one would be extruding the face and we can take that into the model. And now we have uh, something a bit more interesting here. So with that, I'll finish the 3D sketch. And here we have the 3D sketch, which uh, is available inside of the main design here, but you can see it doesn't have all the functionality anymore. So we can still assign it to a function. So this one might be a new function, which could be um, core or uh, plant that's on the roof. And we can now assign that to, to plant and it will show up in the model, whereas the other stuff could be uh, residential. 
So there is still some functionality there, but it's not going to have the same functionality as, say, the, the basic building. So if you do convert it to a 3D sketch, just, just note that um, that's what it's going to do. Um, now, this building can still be further edited, or I could move it to a location. Maybe it could be some site context building here in the background. So I'll just place that over here for now. And with this, I can then get this ready to send to Revit for further development with my site context. So uh, in a further tutorial, we'll be looking at how to develop that in Revit. If you haven't installed it, make sure you download the Revit add-in. Uh, in the next tutorial, we'll be looking at setting it to Revit and then converting some of this data to develop it into a building information modeling model.